The focusing systems on the Alpha 6300 are very good. They're fast, they're accurate. However, they are also very complex. The easiest way for me to break this down for you is to describe it in terms of the how, the when, and the where the camera is focusing. If you can remember those concepts, this is going to be much easier to digest. So how do we focus with the camera? Out of the box, we're going to take our index finger and push our shutter button halfway down. This engages the camera's focusing systems. Focus is indicated when these box corners turn green. We also get a focus dot in the bottom left-hand corner of our monitor, and we also get an audio beep confirmation. Next, let's talk about when the camera is focusing. And this has to do with the camera's focusing modes. They can be accessed by pressing the C1 button, which is right next to our shutter button, and we get this menu on the left side of our screen. We can navigate the menu by pressing up or down on our directional pad. The first one, AFS, stands for Auto Focus Single Lock. That's the one we just demonstrated. Now the thing about Auto Focus Single is as long as I'm holding the shutter button halfway down, focus will not change. This is Focus Lock. I can also move the camera to make my subject more aesthetically pleasing. This is called to recompose. Recomposing is a tool that all photographers should know how to do because it allows us to get a quick focus lock and change the look of the image. There are better tools that we have in our camera that I'll show you for shooting people. Heart of the matter is AFS is a single focus lock for one time. Push it down all the way, it takes a picture. Auto focus C or continuous, this is going to be best for shooting moving subjects because the camera is going to focus over and over and over again, as long as we are holding the shutter button halfway down. We can see that as I'm moving it around, the focus is changing. You'll notice in the bottom left-hand corner, we have these green parentheses around our focusing dot. The win of AFC is continuous. It's always focusing and refocusing. Great for cars, birds in flight, things that move, athletes, crazy little kids running around. There is no focus lock in AFC. AFA stands for Auto Focus Automatic, and in this mode, we're giving the camera permission to decide whether our subject is still or whether she is moving. So it's a hybrid of the first two. This is going to be great if you have subjects that stop and start moving a lot. Maybe you're not comfortable changing your focusing modes. I personally, when I'm shooting moving subjects, I'm on AFC. But AFA gives you some flexibility if you want to turn more control over to the camera. Manual focusing mode. This means that the camera is not focusing ever. We have to use the manual focus ring on our lens to adjust focus. There are some great tools if we come into our menu, second tab, second page, and we turn on something called peaking level to mid. I personally like the red version. What this does is it gives us a pixelated overlay on our viewfinder so we can see where the focal plane is. And we can even move this punch-in tool called the MF Assist Magnifier around using our directional pad. So we can see exactly where the camera is focusing and we can see these little red pixels on Lauren's eyes. Manual focus is extremely useful for shooting video. I like to dial it in manually. Another time is when I'm using Canon adapted lenses. Let's say I'm shooting wide open in low light, maybe 1.2 shallow depth of field, can't get focus, flip it over to manual, use peaking focus. And I leave that feature on all the time, even though it might look a little creepy. If you don't like the MF Assist tool, you can locate it on tab two, page one, and you can turn it off. You would still need to adjust your manual focus ring. I personally kind of like the MF Assist, so I leave it on. The next is DMF, which stands for Direct Manual Focus. DMF allows us to do both autofocus and manual focus. Push a shutter button halfway down, get focus lock, and then I can dial it in with manual focus. It's really a nice tool. So we've talked about the how, 
We've talked about the when, now we're going to talk about the where, the camera's focusing squares. Now there is two parts to this. The first is the position of our focusing squares, and the second is the type, or what I refer to as the clusters of our focusing squares. The first and really important skill that I recommend is learning to change the positions of the focusing square. By default, when you get your camera, you're going to push on the center button of your directional pad. You'll notice it has this little dialog here. It says select focus square selector. So when we push this once, we're going to notice that we get a white outline on our focusing square with these arrows. And this means that we can move this box around almost anywhere in the viewfinder by pressing on the directional pad. Now, if we leave it on, we can come back at any time and move it around some more. This can get confusing if you forget about it. Let's say you wanna change your ISO, you come back, you press to the right and nothing happens. So what I would recommend is practicing this a couple times. Move your focus square over your friend's eye, get a focus lock, maybe move the camera, get it over her eye again. Just practice doing this a couple times. It's really going to give you a lot of mileage. So that is how we move our different focusing squares around. When you're done, turn it off. Next, let's talk about the different focusing clusters themselves. These are different types and groups of focusing squares that we can access by pressing FN and pulling up our submenu. In our menu, they're referred to as the focus areas. The first one is the wide zone. Basically what this means is that we're giving the camera permission to focus on the closest subject to us. If you're a peer beginner, this might be the easiest place to start and it has some important applications with some of the other tools we'll be talking about later. Push the shutter button down all the way, it takes the picture. The second one is called zone. Very similar to the first one, except we're limited to these nine focusing squares that we can move around. And this allows us to restrict the area that we're telling the camera to look in. The next focusing square is center because it's located in the center of our monitor. Unfortunately, we cannot move this around, but we can use it in center lock on mode, which is a tracking feature, probably better used in video. You'll notice I'm in AF single, so I have to push the shutter button down to get lock. Push it down all the way, takes the picture. We'll be talking a little bit more about that in just a second. Now without center lock on, the center square just focuses when we activate our autofocus. The flexible spot modes are the ones that I use the most. And you'll see these little arrows on the left and right. This allows us to toggle through different sizes, small, medium, and large. I personally like to use the medium and large ones the most because it's most similar to how I would control my focusing squares using a DSLR camera. Probably for 80 or 90% of my shooting, that's the focusing cluster I use. This next one, expand flexible spot. It's really a secondary square. So Lauren, I need you to hold your right hand up just with the number one, touch higher. So you're going to see we have a little box here and I'm getting focus lock on AF single. When I go to AF continuous, take your finger and just kind of move it around a little bit. You can see that her finger is activating the secondary focusing square. This is going to be very useful for certain kinds of moving subjects, maybe birds in flight, very good for tracking and autofocus continuous. It's a great tool to have in your bag of tricks. Something that you'll notice when we activate autofocus continuous is that we get a new set of clusters referred to as lock-on clusters. And we have one for each of the focusing clusters we've already discussed. So you can scroll through them. The difference in these is that the camera is going to try to track your subject as it locks on. So Lauren walk towards me, a couple steps, walk back a couple steps, go to your left and right, just a little bit back there. So as long as I'm holding the shutter button halfway down, it's actually doing pretty good. Now, come towards me, Lauren, right there, stop. What I've learned is, is that in some applications, it works great, especially when she stays in the frame. 
Lauren, I'm going to have you walk off the frame, go away off to your right, and then come back in. So sometimes the camera might struggle, go to your left, come back in. It's always going to do better when your subject stays in the frame, go back, come towards us. My recommendation is that if you plan to use this as a serious tool, definitely test it out on your subject in your shooting situation before you rely on it. Let's talk about some of the other focusing tools we have. On the top of our camera, we have the opposite focus button. You'll notice it right here, it says AFMF. The default on this is to do the opposite of whatever it is the camera is set to. So if I am on autofocus continuous and I push this little button down, it's going to jump to manual focusing mode. And you can see that we get our peaking focus tool. When I let go, it goes back to AF continuous. Now if I was to come in and say, turn this to manual focus, and I was to push and hold the autofocus button, it now focuses and I can push a shutter button down all the way to take the picture. So the opposite focus button does the opposite of whatever the camera is set up to do. It's a great little handy tool. Something else I definitely need to talk about is the eye auto focus tool. To set this up, you need to go into your menu, second tab, page seven, custom key shooting. In here, it's page two. And you can see in here, we have these different ways to customize the opposite focus button. When we flip the switch down to the AEL button, we can customize this to be a specific feature. And the one that I have mine set to all the time is eye autofocus. This is a tremendous tool. I'm very impressed with it. So now that the way I have this set up is that when I push this little button is it's going to activate eye detection. You can see a little green square jumping on Lauren's eye. This is a tremendous tool for portrait photographers because we want the eyes of our subjects to be in focus. It's very important that they're sharp and they're crisp. And so the camera is actually really good at this. Autofocus single. If we come in and turn it to autofocus continuous, look at it, track her eye. Lauren walked towards us. Kind of hard to see, but that focusing square is staying on her eye. Back up a little bit. Really nice. And this is a tool that I use all the time when I'm shooting people especially when I'm shooting at very, very wide apertures. Let's talk real quick about back button focusing. So advanced sports photographers, a lot of them prefer to focus with their thumb, removing the autofocus from the shutter button to the back button. To set it up, go to tab two, page five, autofocus with shutter. We're gonna turn this to off. Then we're gonna come back to our custom key shooting page two in here, and we are going to customize the AF MF button to be AF on. So this is back button focusing. Now when I focus, I push on the thumb button. When I lift it up, auto focus is disengaged, push a shutter button down all the way, takes the picture. It's a great way to customize for sport shooting. So real quick, let's talk about some of the other tools that we have to help us focus. First tab, page six, we have smile in face detection, which is going to recognize a person's face. This setting here, face detection on, is more of a general face detection. It's going to be really hard to see this. And another thought is that if you have a smaller focusing cluster, there is going to be conflict. I don't know if you can see this. There's the face detection. If I come over here and focus on this light stand, the priority goes to the focusing square. So if you're going to be using face detection, the way to do it is an AFC, turn your focusing cluster to something like wide. And in this case, the priority is going to be given to the face because we're looking at the entire frame. In my opinion, face detection works best in video mode. So I'm gonna flip this over to video. AFC continuous. Lauren walk towards us. And what you're going to notice is that the camera continues to focus. Now back up and it's locked onto her face wherever she's walking. Walk back a little bit further. 
So for certain kinds of video shooting, this is ideal. And again, this is something that I'd recommend that you test out before using in a serious shoot. Also remember to have it on AFC. Now there's a feature in here called Big Smile Shutter. When Lauren smiles, Lauren smile, it'll take the picture and that's automatic. So if you're a smile challenge, we can have the camera do it. There's even a smile meter over here on the left. So I'm gonna turn this to off. For the registered faces, you can set this up on tab two, page six. The idea is that you take a picture of a face and the camera would recognize it with a purple border. But my personal opinion is I think we have better tools for shooting stills. Coming back out to the menu, we've taken a look at center lock AF before. This allows us to tell the camera to track a moving subject, not necessarily a person. Lauren, back up a little bit, please. I'm going to flip the camera over to video mode, especially in conjunction with the center focusing cluster, is you can see the dialogue changes. Lock on auto focus. So push your center button on a directional pad. This is how we would set it up. And you can see that we have this box around Lauren's face and it's starting. Lauren, go ahead and walk around a little bit. You can see that it's tracking her very nice. Come towards this in a way, kind of randomly walk around. Sometimes this works phenomenally well. If we have enough contrast between our subject and our background, it's going to work very good. If we are shooting in low contrast situations, grays on grays, it's easier to trick. So it, it really depends on your subject, the type of environment you're shooting in, those types of things. For video shooting, however, it's probably the best tracker I've ever seen on any camera, and it's going to come in very handy in certain situations. So one setting I would recommend that you guys turn off is called Pre-AF. It's on the second tab. There it is, page three. I personally like to have this turned off because when it's on, what happens is the camera starts focusing wherever you point the focusing square. And you get this focusing breathing. I'm not a huge fan of that for stills. In the video mode, it kind of stays on, but for stills, I recommend turning this off. So in summary, how do we focus? With a halfway shutter depression. We can also set up the camera for back button focusing. When does the camera focus? AFS is once, AFC is continuous. We also have two manual modes. Where does the camera focus? Using a flexible spot, we can specifically tell the camera where to look by pressing on the center button of our control wheel and then moving the square with our directional pad. We can also track using a lock-on mode. Eye detection is a great tool for portrait photography and highly recommended. In addition to manual focusing for video, we also have center lock-on as well as face detection. And that is your quick crash course on the Alpha 6300's focusing systems. If you found this video helpful, you might be interested in my Sony Alpha 6300 crash course. I'll teach you the basics and show you how to shoot like a pro in no time. You can order it from the following link.